All right. Who has their Bibles? Okay, nobody. Uh, you got your phones. They got your phones. Because we're going to be reading. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Want me, okay. want me to put you louder? No, I'm good. We're going to be studying Adam. And you can't really tell the story of Adam if you don't mention Eve. Because the two go together. And we're going to see subtle Del Cardiapucci in creating man, what happened to man, the fall of man. And it's going to be very good for us. Amen? Amen. So if you got your Bibles, let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And we're going to go over a few points and then we're going to continue. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 30. So just a little bit of context, this is the sixth day, sixth day of creation, and God is about to make man. Verse 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish over the, of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. The first thing that I want to mention is this, verse 27. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him, man, male and female. The first thing we see here is the triunity of God. Odell operating as Father, as Son, and Holy Spirit as one. When God says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. These three words, us our and our these words are used as a plural plural i the, the word for god used here is the 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 hebrew word elohim which was used uh, over a thousand times i believe throughout scripture as a name for god and this name for god is a plural name meaning more than one who is more than one the father the son and the Holy Spirit. So what does that tell us? The Trinity was at creation. They were at work in creation, creating man. Amen? Amen. Then we go to verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. What happens next? God blesses them. God commands them. Fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over all the animal kingdom. Odivano subdue means to rule over. My dominion is to have authority over. So what's happening? Odell del dominion and authority to the male and the female, the man and the woman over the earth. That is their blessings. I'm just giving you a, a broad overview before we go deeper. 29 and 30. And God said, See, I have given you herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life. I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Everyone was vegetarian. The, the, the vegetables and the fruits were given. There was no, no carnivorian animals. They weren't eating each other. Uh, Adam wasn't killing and eating. God gave them Fruit and vegetables, everyone was vegetarian because there was no violence. There was peace on earth that God created between man and the animals that God created. Amen. And then in verse 31, Penel, Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. God's creation was perfect. There was no evil in the world. Everything was done perfect the way he intended it. So now... We go to Genesis chapter 2. And what is Genesis chapter 2? 
It's a deeper view of what we just read. It's an insight view. We're zooming in on the creation of man. Verses 1 through 7, let's read. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day God ended uh, his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Now this is the history of the heavens and the earth. When they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Before any plant of the field was in the earth. And before any herb of the field had grown. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth. And there was no man to till the ground. But a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And now verse 7. We're reading how God creates man. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Amen. Amen. What is this saying? Odelandechik, he forms the man. He creates him. He shapes him. He creates that nose for him and he breathes into him. I did trial. What does this mean? Odelsi, I'm our creator. When you, when you look at yourself, you have to think, I am a creation of God. And what about in Psalms 139 verse 14? I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul, know, my soul knows very well. We are creations of God. Amen? Amen? And then God breathed into his nostrils, and he became a living soul. Ecclesiastes 12, 7, Penel, Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. He is our creator. Amen? Amen. Verse 8 through 14. So now God creates Adam. He formed him. He shaped him. He gave him life. And then the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, a river went out of Eden to water the garden and from there it parted and became four river heads. The name of the first is Pijon. It is the one who, which skirts the whole land of Havilah where there is gold and the gold of that land is good and Bedulam the, and the onyx stone are there. And the name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. And the name of the third is Hidekel. It is the one which goes toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth is the river Euphrates. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. Amen. So, God puts Adam, the man he made, in Eden. Is this a mystical place, a, a place that doesn't exist? No. It is a literal place that actually is some place on earth. How do we know that? Because of the, the rivers that are mentioned. Uh, when Moses wrote this he said God planted a, a garden eastward in Eden so wherever Moses was it was to his east uh, the scholars pretend it could be Mesopotamia which is the Middle East and there is trees in that garden the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil the tree of life is mentioned again in Revelations 22, verse 2. In the middle of the street, on either side of the river, was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree wielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So there is a literal tree in the garden, two literal trees in the garden mentioned, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And there's four rivers. 
Of those four, there are two still active today that we know of, that actually exist. So it's not a, 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 a fictional place. Uh, the River of Pigeon, is, is, it's unknown, it's ceased, uh, Gihon. Uh, in the land of Kush, it says. Kush is today modern-day Ethiopia in Africa. Hidekel, or it's better known as the Tigris, this river today, it flows through Turkey and Iraq. It's still an active river. And the Euphrates is also an active river that flows through Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. So you can go to these places and see how the Bible is not just speaking metaphorically. Amen? Verse 15, then God took the man and put him in the garden to tend it and keep it. So Adam is created, God gives him life, he puts him in a place to live, and now he gives him a job. What is, it, what is his job? To tend and keep the garden. What does that mean? God created man to work. We weren't created to be lazy, we weren't created to be uh, God, in our nature, we are made to work. Proverbs 19, Penel, laziness casts one into a deep sleep and an idle person will suffer hunger. What does that mean? We need to work. That's, that's why we were created. Amen? And then God gives a test and a warning. Penelo did go, Adam, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you shall eat for eat of it, surely you'll die. What is this? God is giving Adam a free will. We see here that our free will could be exercised. We, we, God gives us a, a decision, either obey his commands or disobey. Amen? When he says, you will surely die. Why? When you disobey God, any disobedience to God results in sin. And the wages of sin is death, Romans 8, uh, 6, 23. Sin equals death. You disobey God, the punishment for that sin is death. So it's penalties called it. If you break the commands, you'll die. And this is talking about a spiritual and physical death. Verses, we keep going, verses 18 to 20. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him and out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them so here we could see how God is exercising Adam's authority that he gave him earlier we read that God gave him dominion and to rule over the earth so God now is giving Adam okay you are now giving names to these creatures and they learned the list so you can name them to see, to Adam, to see what he will call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all the cattle, to all the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not a found a helper comparable to him. This is taking place in the sixth day still. Why? Because we read earlier that on the sixth day, God formed male and female. So this is still operating during this sixth day. What does this mean? Did God make a mistake in making Adam alone? No, it just basically means his work wasn't finished. So we continue reading verses 21 through 25. We're going to see a surgery and a wedding. What do I mean? And the Lord caused... And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. And then the rib which, was, which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh and they were both naked and the man and his wife and were not ashamed so what happens verse 21 and 22 God causes a deep sleep to fall upon Adam 
That is basically a menge, like an anesthesia. He put him to sleep. Yeah. He removes a rib and he sealed the flesh. It was a surgery. And out of that rib, the woman was created out of man. God did not make another person out of the dust. He didn't, he didn't use any other material of the world. He used the man's flesh and bone to form a helper for him out of his own flesh. Verse 22 and 23, we see the wedding. And God made it into a woman and he brought her to Adam. What is this showing? This is a wedding ceremony, how we see the image today in modern times, the father walking his daughter down the aisle, about to present it to the groom. Odell, he's bringing Eve, the woman, to Adam and presenting her to her new husband. How do we know this? Because the next verse says, the man and his wife. It wasn't man and woman anymore, the man and his wife wife. Amen? And there's something in verse 25 that's very important. They were not ashamed. Nas bezer andelumia. Nas lajau sosta kanasi bezer when we are in sin there is a sense of shame, of guilt before God. You're happy, you're pure. This is the way God intended everything to be. So, so far, Adam was created. He gave him dominion over the earth, over the animals. Uh, he gave him a, a wife to help him rule. Everything is perfect the way God creates it. And now we're going to get into chapter 3. And this is the, the part where everything goes south. Right? The fall of mankind. Adam's fall. Genesis 1 through 24. We're going to read. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. I told them, or they, if you guys can read. That's too far. Satan is a liar. John chapter 8, verse 4. 44, Penel, you are of the of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father, and the desire of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Why am I telling you that? Why am I reading that? Because we're going to read Saral Duzmano. Amen. Now the serpent was more cunning than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of, uh, of the garden, but of the, tree, of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will surely not die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Oduzmano, he uses these tactics to deceive. First, Hushelka Eve, he asked her a question. As if God is holding back something good from them. Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Did God say every tree of the garden? No. He said of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But why is he? He's acting as if he doesn't understand what happened. That is, he asks a false question. Every tree of the garden? And Eve's response was to correct his question. And verse 2, we may eat of the, of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said you shall not eat. So why she's correcting him? No, he didn't say we can't eat from the trees. He said we can't eat from that one. Why? Why did he ask that question? 
I looked at his mom and he's like, why? He knows if you eat from that tree, you'll be like God. So he's already adding things to so Penelo did so he can deceive her. The Jojabella. It's a tactic that he used to deceive Eve. And then he lies. You will surely not die. What does this mean? The enemy will always try to make God's commands less serious and less important. And he will always twist the words of God. I siempre can do my well to get ill. Geodel, he's not good, that he's a bad, he's holding something back from you. Why? Because he's making it seem, why is he holding this back from you? You will not die, he's lying to you. So, Oduzmano querer temial, as if God is lying. You understand? He tries to make disobedience to God less offensive. He tries to make a God a liar by saying he will not die. Satan is trying to seem as if it's a good thing to do to disobey God and you'll be you'll have the ability to gain wisdom to be like God. Oduzmano he wanted this from the beginning. That was his goal, to be like God. So now he's doing it to Adam and Eve. So what happens in verse 6? When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. Eve was deceived. She took the, she took the fruit and ate. Adam was not deceived, but he disobeyed God directly. Oduzmano didn't go to deceive Adam. He went to deceive Eve. Adam disobeyed God's command directly. What happens next? Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. What happens? Sin enters the human race. Sin enters humanity from being pure, I del, blameless before God, pure, they became sinful. They felt guilt, they, fe they, they, they felt shame because they disobeyed God. So what happens now? They have the, uh, the, the capability to know good from evil and they realize what they've done is evil because they ate from it they realize what we've done is wrong Romans 10 11 says whoever believes on him will not be put to shame this is the reason why Jesus came when they took from this fruit they became shameful so we cannot be put to shame. Amen. And because of this, Romans uh, 5, 12, Penel, let me read it real fast. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, so death spread to all, because all have sinned. Because of what Adam just did now, Sin entered the human race and it spread to all its descendants. And because sin spread to all its descendants, everyone is cursed basically with sin. So now, Odil, from the start, he had a plan. Let's continue. Verses 7 and 8, they sewed fig leaves to hide. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. This is the, a result of, of, of sin, of shame. Obezech makes us want to cover ourselves in our strength. Proverbs 28, 13, Penel. He who covers his sin will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. You cannot physically be able to cover your sin, no matter how much you try to deny it. You cannot. 
It is impossible. Adam and Eve were trying in their strength de usar a ben pecatero del, but you can't. Odel di kel oilo, odel di kel oduko, he sees everything how things are. Amen? Verse 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Odel pirelas in the garden. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. So not those that they, 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 they sewed fig leaves together and, and covered themselves. My garadion behind the trees in the garden even more. So that they can hide from God. So now imagine Odell who creates this perfect beautiful couple in his presence pure sinless. I can have one garadion list up. To this day, to this day, this is happening. God is seeking us, but we are hiding from Him. And the Lord God called to Adam and said, Where are you? So He said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Sin makes us afraid. Shame makes us afraid. But do you think Odel Puchel is asking him this question, where are you? As in, he doesn't know where he's at. He doesn't know where he's hiding. Odel Janel Kailo. Odel Janel Kailo Karado. He's asking him, basically, why are you hiding? Because he knows what he's done. Odel Somangel, in verse 11, it said, He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? He's asking him a question that he already knows. Why? Camilles to confess. He wants him to confess his sin. But still, our human nature starts some of it. We can't accept when we're wrong. We, we're, we're denying always when we're doing something wrong. We can't accept and say yes for wrong. So Penel in Psalms uh, 32 verse 5 I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. God wants us to confess so he can forgive us of our sin. Amen. So what happens? Verse 12 This is the, the response of Adam to his God. Then the man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. He blames his wife. Manaswo, like, Chinito, see, you gave her to me. He's blaming his wife and he's blaming God. Bonaidos. It wasn't me. It's your fault. There is no accountability. He wants no accountability for his uh, for his mistakes, for his sin. Romans 14, 12, Evorba Penel. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Eventually, we're going to have to give an account unto God of our life. Verse 13. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. My fugo, she confessed. She's, she admits she was deceived, but does that make her innocent? No, because she disobeyed. But at least she had, she accepted, I was deceived and I ate. Then what happens? Verse 14. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. The snake now has to slither on its belly, and all the other animals are cursed now also. Why? Because of Adam. 
He was their ruler. He had a dominion over them. I feel para lesco bezek. All cattle is now destroyed. That's when they became wild and they became eating each other and you know, sin spread. Genesis three fifteen. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So from Genesis, what does this mean? From the beginning, God had a plan to destroy Satan. This is talking about Jesus crushing the head of Satan on the cross. God had a plan from the start to undo what Adam did from the beginning. So... When it says here, between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, between your son and her son, who is the son of the woman? Mary, Jesus Christ. Amen. He already crushed the head of Satan. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, it says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. Jesus already destroyed the power that the devil had over humanity. Amen? Amen. So what happens next? The curse. Uh, God now uh, speaks to the man and to the woman. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception and pain. You shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. And then he said to Adam, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and you have eaten from the tree, which I commanded you saying, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake In toil. You shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles. It shall bring forth to you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. Till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. From For dust you are. And to dust you shall return. This is the consequence of disobedience. You will die. Pendelis go dead from the start. If you eat of it you will die. But then. Pale. You see God's mercy. Verse 21. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunic, tunics of skin and clothed them. So because of they, even though they sinned, God still has love and mercy for his children. That's why we are not able to cover our sins. It's not good enough. Everything we try to do it's not good enough. Bill Del Pena, I'm going to have to make you clothing now because the ones you made are not, it's not enough. I have to do it for you. That's John 3.16 right there. This is an image of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He is our, not our covering of sin, but he cleanses us of sin. Amen. Amen. So then what happens? Verse 22, then the Lord God said, behold, the man has became like one of us. This is the Trinity again, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, to know good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Meaning God doesn't want mankind to be in sin forever. He doesn't want us to be in this condition for all eternity. Therefore, the Lord God sent them out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove them drove out the man and he placed the cherubim at the east side of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life took him out took him out of his presence in the garden they were out so what did Adam lose when he sinned when God created Adam in chapter 1, God made him in his own image. God has dominion. God has power. God has rule. So God made Adam, man, to rule on earth. That's what we read in Genesis 1.26. He gives us dominion over the animals, over the, the, the earth. 
God gave Adam the dominion over animals, he could have removed the serpent in the garden, but he didn't use the God-given authority that he had. He didn't. He he, he could have, you know, destroyed it. You know, get out of here. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to obey God. But no. Genesis 1.28, uh, it tells us to subdue the earth. What does that mean? To conquer it, to rule over it. God made him to rule over the earth as a king rules over the earth. But something happened. When Adam sinned, when he listened to the enemy, something happened. He forfeited his rights that God gave him. What do I mean? He became a slave to sin and to the enemy. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Let me find it here. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are the, that one's slaves whom you obey? whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. What is this saying? If you are obedient to sin, you become a slave to sin. You become a slave to the enemy. So what happened? All the rights that God gave Adam, he forfeited it to the enemy. When you become someone's slave, all your possessions, all your property, all your rights, Everything that you own now belongs to the new owner. Satan took the authority, the dominion, and the rulership from Adam. How do we know this? Luke chapter 4, verse 6. This is when the enemy, uh, the devil was tempting Jesus. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. How was it delivered to him when he became, when Adam became his slave? John 12, 31. Hmm. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Who is the ruler of this world? It's Mano. And I'm not saying this to make him a big deal. I'm just explaining what Adam forfeited when he sinned. Colossians 1.13 He had delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Ephesians 2 verse 2 In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. People who are disobedient. Uh, disobedience, Chibachano, Gaisia de Lumia, they're walking in accord with the power of the air. So, he became a prisoner. He became a prisoner I obey. from the creation till now, it's been a war ever since. But God had a plan to set us free. From the sin that brought uh, on to us from Adam. And let's read them. Put a few points up here. Salvation to sinners. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So one, God came to save us. Amen? He came to destroy Satan. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. It's talking about Genesis. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. What works? These works. Where he imprisons people in sin. The way he deceived Adam and Eve. He came to set the prisoners free. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. 
He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Amen. Adam's sin was passed down to his children, who are us, his descendants. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Sin is passed down, so that means we need a Savior. So then Jesus brought on himself our sin and was punished in our place. Isaiah 53, verse 5, Pened, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Amen. Amen. All this is happening because of this, what we're reading here, this, this event that happened. That sin that came into the world. And this shows us the love of God. So then what happened after Jesus took our punishment? Jesus rose from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is risen, who is even at the right hand of God and who makes intercession for us. So God right now, Jesus is interceding for you and me on, on, on our behalf. He's, he's now uh, interceding for us. Amen? So, Oduzmano, he took People, he takes people captive by sin in quererle pangle and the panglimos and the lumia and the bezer in quererle manusen as prisoners to whatever sin. But Jesus came to set people free of sin and to give us back the authority and the dominion that we once had before the fall. Amen. Jesus gives his people authority over Satan. How do we know this? Luke chapter 10. Behold, I have given you authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing sh shall by any means hurt you. So, Penelo Del, if you are in me, I'm giving you the authority back that you once lost. Amen? Amen. Second Timothy. My bad. He gives us the authority. Now Jesus gave us his Holy Spirit. Amen. Acts chapter, you know what, let's read uh, 1 Corinthians 6.19. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have from God, and you are not of your own? All this, so that we can come back in communion with Him. We were separated from God because of the sin that happened in the Garden of Eden and God throughout history is bringing us back and has brought us back through the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ Amen. and he gave us our relationship back the Amen. Amen so I know that it's a lot of material and I, I went over a few points that I I know we don't have time to go over everything but I'm going to give you guys the classes, and at home you can go over each one, and I put there the applications, the verses, and study, not for the class, but so that you can realize and understand the history of mankind. Sostar sio bezer, sostar o Cristo moses astiabel, sostar, it's so important to understand that sin is not just Brahma not as important or not that big of a deal. Odel Musesastiabel de Shorel Pescorat because of sin. He had to pay for us because of sin. Not only that, because of his love for us. Amen. So I want to take uh, a minute and uh, explain a little bit. Obezeh, it holds you down. Ninkerel tu palpale, and it holds you as a 
a prisoner and not it doesn't allow you to get closer to God. For that reason, Jesus had to set us free. That's why he had to come to set us free from the enemy. Odusvano, he wants to destroy Sanso Sile de Blesco, everything that belongs to God, he wants to destroy it. If the, the perfect creation, the peace that God had made, the perfect unity in, in the Garden of Eden, he came to destroy it, but God came to redeem us. Amen. Amen. So, I know I went over a little bit of the time, so I want to take this time and pray. I know it was kind of rushed, but I pray that you guys uh, understand a little bit of the study, and uh, we're going to pass out the the class and let's pray amen, amen. devla nice to get devla that your mercy is great over there yes, that your love for us devla is is uh it's infinite father get you make the devla you didn't leave us in our sin that you came and you gave us eternal life and that you set us free you set us free from whatever was holding us, Mogodel, because of your love, because of your son, Jesus, Father. Father, I pray for everyone here tonight that this word, that this class may encourage them to learn more about you and your love, to learn more about uh, your sacrifice on the cross, Jesus, how this this event in history, Mogodel, changed everything, Devla, and how you had to come and rescue us, the Mughal I thank you for everyone here tonight. Watch over everyone, protect them, their families. In Jesus' name, we thank you. And thus to somebody, most of glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, uh, you can.